Hi there! In this video, we're gonna take a look how to create levels in Buildbox. Let's create a new project and we'll use a 3D game. Let's go inside 3D World by clicking on 3D World and we'll start with two objects in our asset library, cube and ground. We'll need two more for our demonstrations. Let's select ground and duplicate it twice. We'll rename one to finish and we'll change the color to green. Set physics to static. And the other one is going to be an object that we're going to add to make the levels look different. And we'll set the color to orange. The cube is going to be our character, so let's move it into the character spot. And we want the camera to follow the character, so let's select the camera and go under position follow and select character. Now before we add level selection nodes, we're going to set up our scene. And before we start that, let's switch orientation to landscape by going to project settings and selecting a landscape. Let's add a label in the beginning of our scene. This can be our start scene. And the start scene will be created before every level in a new game. So if you have a character, that's where you want to place the character inside the start scene. Let's go select the start scene and duplicate it by clicking D. And this is going to be our first level. Let's rename it to level one. We want to remove the cube. We will rename our label to level one. Let's scale our ground so that level one will be longer. And we'll move our end node to the end. At the end, we want to add the finish line. And for that, we'll use the finish cube. Let's stretch it and let's place an object. Now let's duplicate our scene one, select, click D, and this will be our scene two. And let's duplicate one more time, and this will be our scene three. Let's change the labels, and let's move around some of the cubes. I think we're ready to add the nodes. Let's select cube, and we'll use that brain box move so that we have a movement in the Z direction and we'll just do negative 10. Before we start adding the level selection nodes, let's see how the gameplay is right now. Click play. So we have levels appearing randomly and that's not what we're looking for. Now let's start creating our level logic. To make the level logic work, we're gonna use the cube. So let's double click on cube and we want to add a level selector node. The level selector has two inputs, enabled and next. Now this is important. Enabled needs to be triggered inside a start scene for the levels to work correctly. So since our cube is placed inside our start scene, we can use the cube created signal to trigger the enabled for level selector. You trigger the next input when you want to go to the next level. There's different gameplays that you can create in our case, we're going to be crossing the finish line, but you can create a gameplay that you have to collect certain amount of objects to go to the next level. So the place where you would trigger next may vary. You can use the same note to trigger the next level, but make sure that enabled is triggered inside of the start scene. Since we're using the finish line in our gameplay, let's add an if collide. And on collide, we want to go next and what we're looking to collide with is finish. By triggering next, we select which level we want to load next. To load the level, we need to restart the game. And we can do that by using the event observer. Let's add an event observer node. And on if collide, we'll trigger the menu jump and let's rename our event to next level. And now we set up everything inside our cube node for the levels to work. Let's go to our main map and now we need to add a UI screen. Double click the UI screen. Let's add a navigation button. And the function that we want to select is restart. Let's also add a label. We'll say click to go to next level. Now we can click play and we start. We can see the start scene, level one, and then we have next random levels are being displayed. And they're there because we reached the next scene threshold. We'll fix that, but for now, let's click to go to next. And now we can see that we start level two. We will reach the finish line again. And now we'll start level three. Now let's go fix that draw issue. So we'll go to mind map 
and go to our 3D world. One way to make so that the next levels are not displayed, we can select the end point and move it far enough so that the threshold is not triggered. For anyone that is wondering where the threshold settings are, you can go to mind map and select the 3D world and you can find next scenes threshold right here, which is set to 3000. We're not gonna touch it. Before we check if that fixed our drawn issue, let's look how you can create one level with multiple scenes. So let's go to scene two and let's duplicate it by clicking the again and let's rename it to 2.1. So the idea is to start with a scene two and then transfer into 2.1. And inside 2.1, we'll have a finish line so we'll remove the finish line from scene two. And then in scene 2.1, we want to select the end and also move it far away. For the transition between two and 2.1 to work correctly, we need to go to edit. And instead of randomized scenes, we need to switch it to align scenes because the default is randomized scenes. Let's click align scenes to make that switch. Let's go to scene three and let's move the endpoint on scene three to the end too. Now let's test that. So we don't see the next levels anymore. Let's click and go to level two. And now we can see level two and there's our level 2.1. Using multiple scenes per level gives you flexibility of rearranging your level by moving your scenes around. And if we reach the end again, we can go to level three. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click on the like button and subscribe to our channels. And until next time.